Hello everyone, and uh, welcome back to another episode of Hyrule Chronicles, the uh, Legend of Zelda D&D campaign, episode 23. Uh, with me today, I have playing Hikansio, I have Alvarance. I swear to drunk I'm not Din. <laughs> <laughs> Playing Renji, heir of Nihilus, I have the Netherlad. The pleasure is entirely not mine. Um, playing Zaiden Shari, I have Robopart. Hello. And playing Max, I have Keystrith. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we would have a Steve the playing show dice, but. Uh, he was called into work um, and won't be able to join us for tonight. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, but uh, in regards to most things, um, what happened last time, folks? Well, last time on Hyrule Chronicles, we are fighting in the graveyard as a uh, malevolent force had pulled minister simeon into a mausoleum we are fighting to kill the skeletons and zombies that had been uh, uh, called forth somehow as we dispatched these uh, villainous undead we rushed into the mausoleum where we found the decapitated body of minister simeon a priest was quickly called and a resurrection ritual was attempted. However, the soul of Simeon seemed to have been taken by something. There are some differences of opinions, uh, what we should do next, and a altercation, a verbal altercation ensues that is uh, being called to order by young Hikan, who, uh, in an emotional uh, attempt uh, to bring uh, each other together, uh, calls for aid outside of a party. And I think that is where we left off. Hmm. Indeed. Um, and so it is that we rejoined the party. Um, I just want to have a bit of a recap on... Uh, each person's actions after that generally unfortunate scenario had taken place. Um, so, uh, I guess we'll start with uh, another lad. After speaking with Larson Graves and the priest in and the uh, priest of Hylia uh, in regards to what had just transpired, and they disappear into the mausoleum to do their own investigation. Um, what? Uh, what was your goal? What was your plan for the rest of the evening? Um, my plan is to try and find out if there's anything in the Hyrule Castle library that I can find on the uh, insignia of the Toothed Eye. Okay. Um, so I'm guessing with like without a word, you just make make your way back to the castle. Um, you, uh... mm, well, hmm? no. Before before I do that, um, and I understand that it is something that Renji would definitely do, uh, storming off by himself. <laughs> um, he's going to want to uh, try and see if Hikan is all right. He, uh, Renji hadn't seen him that animated before. Okay. Um, so he'd want to check in. Okay. Um, so in that case, Hikan. Um, I think last time you said something, you said you went to the wasp's nest? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, um, before, uh, Renji had a chance to talk to, um, Larson and the priest, uh, after having his, um, ex 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 explosion moment at both Renji and Sho, uh, Hikan's like, yeah, no, I mean, like, if you guys aren't going to call for help from outside things, then yeah, it's going to take forever and everyone's going to fail. He went to the wasp nest, so I don't know. Like, yeah. So he, okay. He's 
decently gone at this point. He didn't tell anyone where he was going either, because okay. either they had already left, like Tyrina, who would be the person to go drinking with him. <laughs> yeah. Um, if that if that is the case, uh, uh, Renji, if you'd like to roll an investigation check to see if you can find Hikan. Um, All right, here it comes. That's an 11. An 11. Okay, so we'll resolve that 11 in a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Hikan, uh, you storm through the city, um, and having been here for a while, you managed to find your way back to the wasp's nest. At least it's not the first time that you've uh, that you've been there. Um, and... Uh, as always, as you tra as you transition from the uh, the eastern residential district uh, into the the slums, you can kind of see the surrounding area, the buildings and the people. There's kind of just this transition of um, otherwise pleasant, happy, uh, well-to-do individuals turning into skeptical, uh, suspicious cautious individuals in a run-down part of the city um, none of them are aware yet as to what has happened um, and uh, as you kind of turn to the wasps nest you find the place is pretty much the same as it always was with the exception of one of its grubby windows now having been removed uh, through the use of uh, something large and heavy if, uh, there's just like this now nice big hole where this murky glass used to be next to the front door what check would that be to see if it's vaguely person shaped <laughs> um, that would be an investigation check awesome minus two let's go because you're scrutinizing it <laughs> five okay <laughs> Um, so it looks like a hole. It's vaguely round-ish. Um. <laughs> I shrug. I'm not going to give it more than that much time. It's just, oh, there's a hole now. Okay. And then I'm going to go in and proceed. Okay. Through the hole? No, through the doors. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Boring. So um, you push it. Hikan's not in the mood for shenanigans at the moment. Yeah. Uh, you push open the door, um, and inside you see some of the usual patrons, uh, some of the, the thieves and thugs that uh, frequent the bar, uh, sipping on their watered-down ale as they usually do. But now there is a familiar sight of a very large blank space between the regular patrons sitting at their tables and at either end of the bar, and this one fairly short red-haired woman who is um, kind of leaning on the bar and just trying to mind her own business. If she's at the bar, I will go sit next to her, but I won't say anything okay. to her. It's just one of those, like, uh, all right, cool. She's the red-headed lady that threw the other dude out of the bar. Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so you head over to the bar and you sit down. Uh, there's kind of a brief glance from this woman to you before she focuses on the uh, the mug in front of her. Um, and uh, the barman um, looks to you kind of with this brief glance of, is he it? All right. And then goes over and says, um, so um, what would you like to drink, sir? What do you got that'll get me drunk the fastest? He looks over his shoulder and he sees all the various different uh, bottles with the rubbed out labels and everything just kind of sitting on the bar and he says, um, mm, you know, I don't know. I could try and mix something for you if you want. Sure, that sounds good. All right, that'll be uh, one gold piece then, please. I put two on the counter. Okay. So he kind of he sees the two and immediately swipes it up, having learned his lesson from when the last person came in and gave people two platinum. And, <laughs> and um, 
he uh i wonder who that was yeah <laughs> he, hmm. he pockets it and uh then takes like several bottles from the thing begins to mix them into a, a medium-sized flagon and slides it to you it doesn't smell very pleasant um it don't got to I get it. i'm gonna guess to chug it that's a con save yes please <laughs> That's an 18. Nice. Um, okay. Uh, so you kind of you down it, and then um, there's kind of a, a rumble in your stomach where you feel like clearly what's mixed in here is not meant to be mixed. Um, either that or the, the, sanitary, the sanitary conditions on the, on the thing that you've just been given is not, uh, not exactly the, um, the best of things. Um, but you don't feel like you have a bit of a buzz yet. I sigh. I give him five more gold, and I just straight hop behind the bar. And using my brewer's kit and the supplies behind there, I just start making drinks. Okay. Um, make a uh, <laughs> make a brewer's kit uh, check based off of wisdom. That's a thirteen. It's not yeah, bad. Yeah, it's good. It's like, gives you a gives you a, a, an average bout of ale. That's good. Um, so you uh, you situate yourself behind the bar and you begin to mix drinks, and um, the barman just kind of looks at you, and looks at the redheaded woman, and looks at the looks at the hole in his window, and it's like fuck it, and just kind of walks off to go and do something else. Um, clearly, he clearly he too has had enough enough of a day, um, <laughs> but uh, as you begin mixing drinks, uh, the redhead woman just kind of looks up briefly and says, "Can I have one of those?" I just pour her a cup. Actually, before I pour her a cup, I check the cup that she has, go over, wash out a cup, and then give her a cup. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, you um, you give her a cup. She picks it up. She takes a sip, and there's um, let's see what her con save is like. It's not great. Um, she kind of takes a sip, and there's a <coughs> oh, that's strong. It's, uh, it's not the best I've made. Uh, it's it's still pretty good. It's better than the shit that they've gone here. Um. I look at the like materials that I'm using. It is the shit that they've got in here. Oh well, yeah, but at least you put it together <laughs> properly. <sighs> I start chicken scratching the the stuff that I'm mixing together to leave it for him. Yeah, or for the barkeep. <laughs> uh, she says. Easy uh, lovely handwriting that you've seen. Mm. Um, she kind of looks over and says, "Um." Uh, Oh, she's going to very quickly incite you. It rolls rather well. Um, and she says, uh, she kind of looks you up and down and says, um, Yeah, um, you've been for a bit of a rough patch too, eh? It hasn't been the best day, no. Okay. Well, uh, I'd offer to trade stories, but I don't think a case of uh, sad bastard one-upmanship is going to be um, going to be on your mind right now. But uh, feel free to say something if you want to. You're already far more pleasant conversation than uh, than many of the other men I've had to deal with today. Yeah, I was kind of there uh, at the other bar where you threw the dude out. Oh, I... I didn't get to really comment much on that one because I just finished eating and or finished an eating competition, and my druid friend was really nice and helped me out with that. But I kind of had to hmm. take care of some things after. I, I, that's that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, my name is Leona, by the way, Leona Goodwater. He can't see you, and um. I offer a hand for a handshake. I know that not everyone's like Chica and does the whole bowing and 
Mm. Respect. So she gladly takes your hand and shakes it. As you get a closer look at her, you can see that there is what is the remnants of a black eye under her left eye and um, a scar across her right cheek. Um, and uh, she says, um, well, uh, and raises a glass and is like, I guess uh, here's to eh, fuck it and just drinks um, after about uh, a couple minutes of this where she just kind of regresses into herself and uh, continues to drink um, that is when uh, you see the shadow of Renji coming past the window and Renji you cut you find your way to the wasp's nest are oh, you stealthy mm -hmm. okay um yeah, i'm ducking behind the bar okay make a uh, make a perception check Renji with pleasure 15 Oof. okay contested rolls oh. i think defender wins on contested rolls um I would have instigated that one, so... Yeah. So that would be me defending. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Renji, as you as you peer in through the window, you can see what you believe to be uh, the form of Hikan just duck behind the bar, um, just out of the corner of your eye. I'd step in. Okay. Door opens. Walk everyone. towards the bar. Everyone glances at you. This well-dressed individual <laughs> walking into their bus. A couple of them kind of like there's whispers. You overhear one of them say, it's the guy who bought that thieves kit. I wonder if he's got more platinum. Um, yeah. As I uh, walk over to the bar, sit down, lean in just a little to see Pekan, uh hiding there. Can can we talk? What you want to talk about? Not here, please. Beat me to the punch. I was gonna try to do something funny, but. <laughs> Hikan sighs and um, pours Leona another cup and then chugs whatever's left in his brewing kit and walks okay. see politely you. around the bar opposed to hopping over it this time. Yeah. Um, as you uh, as you leave, uh, she uh, Leona raises the mug that you just gave her and says, uh, "Thank you." Um, if uh, if this guy gives you trouble, just come back in and let me know. I'll, I'll sock him one for you. <laughs> if he gives me trouble, I'll be able to handle it. Okay. But thank you. No worries. Okay. So, where are you guys going? Um, somewhere outside where I could tell, uh, there weren't any uh, eavesdroppers. Okay. It's easy enough to find a nice secluded alleyway a couple of buildings away. Um, looking around, there's no windows between the buildings. Uh, seems there's enough cover somewhere where you can just kind of talk unheard. Uh, from a from my pouch I would grab a piece of paper quickly jot down the symbol that I've seen the sigil mm -hmm. and I hold it out to Hikan whoever it is that uses this symbol has Simeon's soul I know you were friends. You were probably the most acquainted with him from all of us. I 
I want revenge. I want him back. I can't do it alone. I can't. Will you join me? I don't care about revenge, Renji. But, but you care about your friend, don't you? I can get him back, and the thing can go on doing... Like... I'm more sad about it. Yeah, I want my friend back. I'm sure all of us whose symbionts extended his kindness to want him back. And it seems as though he wanted to come back. But... That but doesn't... What? I know that I'm really good at punching things and other people are good at different things and that I don't I don't know what it is that took him I don't understand the details but I'll help get him back but I'm not going on a quest for vengeance I'm going on a quest to get my friend back I'd do the same for Sebastian I'd do the same for a lot of people but calling for a lot of violence I didn't see a lot of it firsthand but when I was where I was trained to do what it is I do it was in the west and I wasn't close to a lot of things. A lot of the stuff that I experienced was, you know, go find this in this and learn how to survive in the middle of the wilderness and stuff. But mm. it doesn't mean I didn't see things from really bad conflicts or people come back hurt or things like that. And I know that we've gone through and we've hurt some things or some people. And I know that when that, 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 that I understand things simply like with the witch and the person that you thought we might have been able to help. And we didn't talk about that. And I acted rashly, but. That's... I don't know. Listen, I can't. Something has taken... Something has taken a soul from a good man. I don't want that thing to be able to do anything like that anymore. I want to make sure that this kind of thing doesn't happen again. Not to our friends, not to anyone. So if you're saying that vengeance is rash, I'm, I'm saying this is 
for a greater good. Take back our friend and make sure that this doesn't happen again. Do you want to stop it because it took our friend? Yes. Uh. If it if it hadn't, then then that fight in the that fight just now would have just been the end of it. We would have gotten him back. Wouldn't have this conversation. Maybe I didn't ask it right. I don't know how to phrase these kinds of things. Well, could you try? Do you only want to stop it because it hurt our friend? That is a good question. I think that's what the difference is. I would say no. Hmm. If it had taken if it had taken anything else, anyone else? The fact that it took our friend just brought it to our attention. I realize this this is not something that I think we are supposed to shoulder I mean look at us we're barely full grown We have all these travels already, and the old belts. Yep. Here I am, just playing at being a hero, and look what happens. It was right in front of my face, Khan. Right there. And... Couldn't do anything. I need to do something. To set it right. Otherwise, I'm just a spoiled little brat that everyone thinks I am. This, I'm sorry, this, this doesn't help. And I make way to uh, leave the alleyway to uh, Castle Town. You're not a spoiled brat. <laughs> Tell that to everyone else, Khan. Maybe they'll listen to you. I 
when I leave. Can't do you pursue him? No. Um. <laughs> I go to the back to the wasp nest. I came over here for an intense, and I'm kind of done. Okay. <laughs> making drinks until either I pass out or I don't remember the rest of the night. Whatever happens first. Okay, that's fine. Um, so while you, uh, while Renji heads back to Castle Town to make his way to the library, um, oh, hmm? did he give me that symbol? Uh, I think I would have handed it to you to uh, okay. look at it, yeah. Okay, then yeah, I'm going to um, hold on to that. Okay. Um, mm. And do something about it tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Um, while you guys do go, go about the rest of your business, Max, last I heard you decide to leave the castle, or the castle town walls to find a tree somewhere to hide <laughs> under... Yeah, Max probably like after all that, just wanders out of the graveyard, walks around the city for a while, realizes he can't really find anywhere to go. Feels that going to Simeon's would be in poor taste, and just heads out the nearest gate he can find. Mm. He can. Okay. Um. Zaiden, do you go with him, or do you have your own business to attend to? Uh, Zaiden, for his part, was going back to the slums to help people, to do something that felt useful. Okay. Um, that's the case. Uh, so, Max, you head outside the castle walls. Um, you find yourself a nice... Uh, a nice small, uh, uh, well, a nice couple of trees to kind of just lay under, as uh, the evening, as the, uh, the evening sky changes from orange to dark purple to black. Um, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, a chill on the wind, um, more so than there usually is. Like it. it definitely feels unnatural um, from uh, from your perspective and while the uh, while the rest of the world carries on regardless um, you find yourself uh, dozing off slightly and um, as you do I would like you to make a wisdom saving throw for me please okay a 21. That's a 21. Wait a minute, is this some of that juicy backstory that I've heard about? <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. So, a as you as you drift off, you are um, your senses almost relocate elsewhere. Um, you find yourself you find yourself like lost to the darkness of sleep and then immediately uh, you see brief flashes of different images and you're able to withstand this torrent of information this uh, these unfamiliar nightmares enough to to kind of capture the details of it in this brief moment that you've dozed off um, there are a variety of images uh, one of which is the shadow, uh, or the avian shadow, of an all too familiar individual, kind of looking over you, eyes piercing through the darkness. Um, then it flashes away, and then it flashes back, and you see a colossal winged figure that sits above a city. That doesn't look like Hyrule Castle Town, um, with a flash of lightning that splits the sky, and then that goes away as well. And then you see two individuals, both in uh, both looking very much like each other, very much like you. One of which appears to have uh, shorter red hair 
the other one appears to have white hair of your length. Um, and they both seem terrified. And as that last image kind of burns itself in your mind, that's when you wake up and find that it's still nighttime. He rest. wakes up it immediately, cast shock and grasp on whatever's nearest, which is probably the tree trunk that he was resting against. Yeah, the, the bark just kind of blackens and burns at your touch as you um. <laughs> then, in a panic, he just looks around to make sure that he's not back there. Yeah, you, uh, you look around can't seem to see anything there is a light that seems to be coming up the path like a torch light while he tries to gain control of his breath again Max is just gonna watch the light okay it kind of gets closer and closer you see that holding a torch um, is Tyrena it kind of just stops a good like 15 feet away from you um, still kind of with this dour look on her face and she just says um, hey what are you doing out here? I was looking for my friends oh well. I think I'm the only one who came this way. Yeah. Um, uh, someone in the city said that they saw uh, someone look like you um, coming this way, so I thought I'd check it out, and well, here I am. And she kind of wanders over and then sits down next to you. Um, they're not too close, just kind of sits a, <laughs> sits a, uh, a comfortable distance away. Um, she says, um, how are you holding up? Fine. I... I'm fine. It's probably the others who are more shaken by what happened. Yeah. Well, uh, would you mind if I was to sit here for a bit? I don't feel comfortable being in the city for tonight. Sure. Thanks. Kind of puts the torch down for a bit, leans against the little tree, and it stares up into the night sky. It's a nice, pleasant, clear night all things considered, with the exception of the chill wind. She says, um... You know, uh... I didn't really... I didn't really have many friends back in the desert. Uh, it was all very formal, at least my training aspect of it. Like, sure, some of my sisters got hurt, one or two of them died in the training, or from monsters that were in the desert, or uh, getting caught by patrolling Hylian guards and that sort of thing, and it was sad, but I didn't really have much of a connection to them, but this is, this is different. I'm not sure how to process it. Simeon was good to us. Let us stay in his house when he barely knew us. He I didn't even know what friends were until I met Sidon. The... 
Nice just shakes his head and looks away. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And she kind of just kind of sits there in silence for a bit. Eventually she just takes out a water skin and douses the torchlight. And uh kind of just lies there for a bit keeping an eye on the environment around anything you want to say to her or anything you wanted to do or is it just going to be attempting to get back to sleep what's the des? what is a desert yeah it looks over a bit bewildered and like do you not oh uh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, never seen one before. Um, I I guess for lack of a better description, do you know what the sea looks like? I don't think so. Uh, what about a lake? Uh, uh yeah, lake, water, lots yeah. of it. Yeah. Imagine that, but instead of water, it's sand. Just sand everywhere, and it's really hot. Can't grow anything there. Can't really raise animals there, to be honest. I mean, we're <laughs> we're uh, we're lucky enough to get by with horses, um, but it's lots of sand, lots of heat. Gets really hot during the day, and very very cold during the night. Um, doesn't, no offense, but it doesn't sound all that pleasant. Yeah, it doesn't. And I mean, it's, I think it's a situation where we kind of have to make do. Um, I mean, our king's a stubborn kid, and the regent general is just as stubborn as he is. He's, um, there's not much of a, an opportunity for us to try and integrate into Hylian society so that we can live in the kingdom of Hyrule where there is no death on the wind, so to speak. Um, but it's... Uh, I can't say it's not given us some kind of benefit. I mean, <laughs> I don't know any Gerudo who is not capable of withstanding a lot of bad stuff. I don't know any Gerudo who isn't capable of defending herself. We're tough. We kind of got dealt a raw hand and we made do with it and we're still here. We're still kicking. And at, at the words dealt the raw hand, Max kind of slightly cringes a bit. Mm. Yeah. I'd advise if you possibly can not going to the desert it's not like the Gerudo are terrible people we're not but it's just not a, a place to stay it's not a place to visit it's just unpleasant and uh no. yeah I'll take your word for it. Okay. Since you should know better than I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She kind of turns her and attention then... back to mm -hmm. staring off into the distance. Mess is going to attempt to get some rest again. Okay. This time, as you kind of doze off slightly, you are able to rest appropriately. Um, meanwhile, with Zayden, um, you said that you were going to the slums to do your your round of um, feeding the hung feeding the hungry. Yes. Yeah. Um, much like before, they haven't actually been made aware of what happened with Simeon. 
Um, there's uh, there isn't much of a rumbling as of yet. Thank uh, it's possible because of the festival or because of this general idea of the slums not really giving a toss about anybody in high society. They've um, there's not really an inkling about these individuals who are uh, a, like aware that Lord Simeon has passed away. Um, but and as per usual, when they see you, a uh, reliable source of of food, and nourishment, and kindness, um, it's back to their usual uh, approaching, begging, thanking, pleading, moving on. Um, they uh, they are always eternally grateful that you have decided to be be so generous to them. Um, and, uh, as you go about your business, there is a, um, a brief pause as the clanking of metal can be heard coming from around one of the corners, and instinctively, um, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the slum dwellers kind of at, in the midst of approaching you for more food, they hear the sound and then shy away. Um... And as you uh, look over, you see turning the corner is Larson Graves in his in his full plate mail. Um, just turn the corner and see, you and he goes, "Hmm, hello, hello, Larson. How are you faring?" I, I am as well as one could expect. I am sorry for your loss. Leave out Our time with him was short. But he seemed like a good man. Hmm. I don't think many would disagree with you there. We've um We've done what we can to investigate the site. We're pulling up a lot of lacking information um, we have an idea as to what kinds of spells were used to perform whatever ritual it was but we're missing some information I was wondering if you'd be able to pass on a message to your companions I shall um, if they could uh, convene at the uh, north gate barracks um, we just need to have a talk about a couple of things if possible very well. Thank you. And uh, he uh, salutes and uh, wanders off, plates clanking as he goes, um, likely to see if he can find the rest of his companions, or the rest of your companions, and perform the rest of his duties. And you are left in the street, and as, uh, after a short period of time, as the as as Larson disappears around another corner, the once hiding slum dwellers exit their hiding places and come back to you to seek more food. Um, yeah. Uh, Sidon will hand out the last of his uh, good berries and ask if anyone has seen either or any of his companions around here anywhere. Um, as you describe them, uh, one of them says, "Oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I think I saw a, I think I saw one of them go into the wasp's nest. And two of them actually. I don't know if they're still there." Thank you, sir. I shall go check myself. Okay. So you head over to the wasp's nest. Um, as you uh, as you are arriving. Um, you also pass by the window of the of the tavern, uh, Hikan. You see the you see the shadow of um, the shadow of Zaiden pass by the window. Uh, as you are attending to drinks and slowly getting more and more drunk, um, you had uh, a brief chat with Leona, uh, who has uh, explained that she used to work at Lon Lon Ranch. Um, but circumstances have caused that to not be a thing anymore. 
um, though she's rather tight-lipped as to what circumstances prevented her from working there anymore. Um, but uh, as you pour another drink, you see Zayden by the window. Do you attempt to hide from Zayden this time? I mean, you said I'm pretty buzzed, so... <laughs> <probably>. <laughs> I mean, even though I have a, what, plus six perception, it's like, oh, no, it's just another person. This is okay. Okay. So, uh, Zayden, you see clear as day a, a, a buzzed Hikan in the tavern. And I'm going to stop this music because it's a bit too, yeah, a bit too eerie. For oh, yes. Zayden will then go over to Hikan. Mm -hmm. Oh. Hello, Hikan. Hi. Are you sober enough to talk? That's a good question. Depends on what you want to talk about. Larson wishes to speak with us. Probably not. <clears throat> Uh, question to the GM. Yes. Does lesser restoration cure drunkenness? Um, that's a good question. Um, make it so. Make it so. <laughs> make it so. Make it so. I would. Th I would think so, especially if it says that it cures the poisoned condition. It does. Then yes, it does. <laughs> In which case, Lighten's just going to very quickly reach out grab his head and cast Lesser Restoration on his drunkenness. <laughs> Ooh, an 11 doesn't sound like a dodge. <laughs> it does not. No, it does not, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, Don't tell. Oh, God, no, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> Coming frightfully sober within a few seconds. Um... I just kind of want to know, out of character, how Leona has taken the fact that three white-haired dudes have all just walked in, what? and like one's just like minding his own business, taking a drink, and two other white dudes are like, let's go talk. Or white-haired dudes are like, let's go talk. Um... Also, does Lesser Restoration stop hangover? Presumably. It cures the poison, so... I would assume, I would assume so, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll... We'll dwell on that for another time. Do I'd say depends on the depends on the specific alcohol that they've been taking. If it's something like Gorm Rot, then it's a whole different story. Um, so it's uh, yeah. In regards to how Leona's taking it, Leona's kind of buzzed herself um, to the point where she's like in the process of dozing off on the bar. Um, so she does. So she kind of casts a glance over at you guys and is too out of it to have enough energy to stop whatever it is that's happening. So she's just kind of... Uh... Hmm. Alright, if you want to talk, you can talk. I was gonna go to the Temple of Din in the morning. But if you want to do it now, I guess I can't say no. Have you seen Renji? He was here a while ago. He wanted to talk. He's taking it harder than I am, believe it or not. You know where he went? No, I didn't follow him. Very well. Uh, he said he wasn't. He wanted the North something barracks, right? Yeah, North Gate barracks. The uh, East Gate barracks, when we were doing the uh, Marcus, Marcus's quest thing, those are right by the gate, right? Yeah. Like, at the gate, okay. Mm. Uh, Larson said to head to the North Gate barracks. Okay. Um, there's a few of us to find, you know, want some help finding them? That would probably be best. Do you want to split up, or do you want to go together? Unless you have any particular idea of where to look, there's no particular need to split up. I have no idea. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, only place that I think Renji might have gone would be 
where he was showing us the other day, and I don't know if we can get in there or not. Well, at least Max and Tyrina stand out. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Is, uh, now that she's dozing off, do the uh, patrons of the bar um, look like they're going to try something since, you know, she might have thrown one of them out of the window? Um, you can't be sure. I mean, make an insight check. What am I saying? Make an insight check. An eight. An eight. Um, Sidon will try the same. Okay. Keeping an eye out on the people. Side. There you are. Ooh, ten. Neither of you can be sure. Um, it's kind of a mix of emotions. I think they're they're. It's quite it's quite clear that they are largely scared of Leona. Um, but uh, you can't be sure whether or not they'll do anything while she's barely conscious. If you try, if like, 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 like kick on in, in all seriousness, mostly because you know he's in not the best of moods, particularly since his drunkenness was um, abruptly ended. Mm. Um, <laughs> if I find out that something happened to her and the person that does it survives being thrown from the window again, um. I'm afraid that I'd have to come back and do something. And given how familiar I am with the stock here, really, really don't think it'd be a good idea to mess with somebody who's a friend of somebody that knows how to make your drinks. Make a uh, make an intimidation check with advantage. Nineteen. Nice. There's kind of a hush in the bar as they as they let that sink in. There's a couple of errant nods. Okay. You guys have a good night, and I will follow Zayden out the door. Okay. Excellent. Um, so Zayden will just inquire. So, who was the woman? Oh, um. The the, the 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 same woman that threw the other dude out of the window um, when we were doing the stuff at the festival. Her name's Leona. She used to work at Lawn Lawn Ranch. She stopped, but she wouldn't tell me why, which is kind of fair because she was in a bad mood and I was in a bad mood and I'm not really wanting to talk about it, drunk or sober. Very well. Let's go find the others. Okay. Okay. We shall go investigate for companions. Indeed, make investigation. I will assist because <laughs> yeah. I have a minus two, so I will just give him advantage. Okay, that's okay. good. That's a good idea. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Um, after asking around as the evening goes on, you do find a couple of uh people walking around late who say that they saw a um a big intimidating Gerudo woman uh leave through one of the gates. Uh, with a torch in hand, um, and uh, another person says that they saw someone who looked more or less like Max go through that same gate. You can say like a dirty hobo, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if someone does say that, he's going to get quite a long glare from Zayden. <laughs> Followed by the pondering in his head of, I should really get that kid some clothing. Oh, quick side note, I never grabbed my staff. <laughs> oh yeah, it's still... I just it. left it there. It doesn't matter, but... <laughs> probably picked up his evidence, all things considered. At this point, probably. Yeah. So I guess we'll head out towards um, where they've designated. Yeah. Probably just outside the west gate. Okay. Head outside the west gate and look for them. So you, uh, you head outside the west gate, um, follow the path briefly. As you uh, see near the side of the road, there are a, a small gathering of trees, and just sleeping under a tree is Tyrena and Max. Um, 
there's a, a a doused torch next to the two of them. Um, Sidon will pick up the torch, mm. uh, light it with magic. Okay. Have you finally got to use it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I did use it for the weather at one point. Yeah, yeah I think you and use it for he'll the weather. Just say, <clears throat> Max, Tarina, wake up. Um, Tarina, being a light sleeper, like her eyes flicker open slightly. Like, oh, hey, guys. Ugh. Max's hand just sort of slaps over his eyes and he just. <laughs> What's up? Don't make me turn into a bear and get you. No. <laughs> um, um, no, he'll just dead. take like the it turns to a giant cat and just drag him by his neck. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you don't want to do that. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> um, you two. Larson wants to speak with us. North Barracks. Okay. Now. Now. I was getting drunk, so yeah, I know. Fine. Alright. Sorry, stands up and stretches lightly. As, uh, what about Ranji or Sho? Are, are, are they coming too, or are they just. Um... I think Ranji's probably locked himself in the castle. Of course. Yep. Sho, presumably following him. Mm -hmm. Out of curiosity, have I had or the equivalent of a short rest by this time? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Cool. Um, Max also makes no effort to hide the bird mark on the tree. <laughs> <laughs> what trees are meant to look like that, right? <laughs> it's a badass tree. It got a tattoo and everything. Um, yeah. A cool scar you can show off to his friends. So, um, you guys head back into uh, into Castle Town uh, to go and meet with Larson. Meanwhile, Renji. 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 Um, Renji. So you're. Uh, where are you headed this fine evening? Hyrule Castle Library. Okay. Um. So you head into the library. Uh, you make your way through the uh, uh, through the halls. Um, it is incredibly quiet, uh, hmm. though you can see that there are lots of. Well, it's, in, it's quiet, but occasionally you catch a glance of, of guards moving down hallways at a brisk pace. Um, there are no drills happening in the courtyard. There is nothing. It seems like whatever news has happened has occurred has reached the castle at the very least um mm. and uh, eventually you find yourself before the immense doors of the library are they uh closed uh they are closed but it's still early enough in the evening that it wouldn't be locked or considered a faux pas to be in the library this late mm. i uh push open the doors and there's a they swing open and you see before you the uh the immense archive that is the Hyrule Castle Library. Um uh Mara is not at the front desk at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Um in fact nobody is. Uh it seems just as quiet in here as it is in the rest of the castle. In that case Renji hasn't been in the library enough to know basically the like the categories of books, does he? I mean, you've lived here for a while, so I, oh, I would true. assume you have some kind of thing. If you want, you can have an investigation check with advantage. Um, it okay. is familiar territory to see if you can find a uh, 
the right section for this sort of thing. In that case, um, I, I am looking specifically for like um, books on on sigils and markings of evil things. <laughs> Okay. As vague as that is, that's a 13. Oh boy. That's 13. So you spend a couple of hours going through the sections. You find a section on the arcane, flipping through books, finding sigils, finding histories or coats of arms or anything, and sadly coming up blank. Um, you then move on to different things, such as religious iconography, once again. Nothing seems to be brought up. Um, and it kind of goes on like this for a while. And you can't seem to find anything that has that sort of symbol that you have on hand um, present there. You find certain similarities. Um, you find uh, uh, things that kind of suggest... Other things, but nothing that involves itself with necromancy. Um, as you kind of search and search and search, eventually, as you're piling through one of the books, uh, there is a tap on your shoulder. Um, describe the tap because it that might. It's it's uh... a, it is a gentle tap, like. Um. Renji would just twirl around and um, ready, ready an eldritch blast. Um, as you as you turn around, uh, you see the uh, the wavy blonde hair and bespectacled face of Mara just kind of just kind of change from this sort of curiosity to shock as she staggers back, saying, like, "Oh, hey, hey, hey!" I immediately like release. Uh... <laughs> the magic and it's like sorry um don't do that I, please i'm sorry it's it's a library i'm meant to be quiet what what's are you okay uh, i'm not sure you've heard oh yeah i'm sorry i shouldn't i shouldn't have uh, Mara, I was there. Yeah. I, I, I didn't see him pass away. But I saw his body. He wasn't. He wasn't there anymore. And. Uh, hold on, and I, I start scribbling out the the sig sigil again, um, for her to see. Okay. Uh, have you have you ever seen this before? Uh, she kind of takes a glance at it, um, and she kind of narrows her eyes slightly, and eventually has a very slow shaking of the head and says, um. No, I... I don't think I've seen this symbol before. Um, have you, uh... Have you asked any of the... Other Sheikah in the castle? Maybe they might know. Not yet. I wanted to figure out... Um... For myself first. Okay, um... And suppose um, kind of thinks on something and says, all right, okay, uh, so here's what's gonna, here, here's what we're gonna do, okay? Uh, we're, um, you are going to leave that symbol with me, and I will do the research. You go and find your father, make sure that he's aware that you're safe, and I will get oh. back to you as soon as I can, and you get some rest. Oh, have, have, have you seen him? I... I haven't seen Nihilus, no. I'm sorry. He might be oh, looking for you. Be. He's he's good at tracking people. Remember that. He's uh, He'll find you eventually. I've, uh, I've gotten better at uh, hiding myself. Oh, I've really worried him. 
daughter. Um, Mara, bef bef before I leave. What's up? This, um... Yesterday evening... Um... There was something... There was a... There was a ruckus in the library, wasn't there? And she kind of like tilts her head slightly and, and eventually kind of pieces things together and is like, Oh, I, I see. Yeah. Well, I'm... Um... Um, sorry about that. And Ranger leaves. And it stands there in silence slightly as you uh, as you head out. Um, and uh, uh, where are you heading specifically? Um, would I know of like routes that Nihilus would uh, survey? Or like a lookout tower within the castle. He kind of has like a he kind of has like a hunting territory where he's like the entire castle. In fact, the entire entirety of castle town is effectively his purview. But um, he doesn't mm -hmm. really have a set route just in case someone's following him. Um, mm -hmm. At least you know that much. Um, but you also know your father. You know how that he's remarkably impressive when it comes to finding people um so uh you've kind of reasoned with yourself that you can either go to his room or you can find a single spot and stay in it and he'll eventually track you down mm. i'll uh let's see castle town just shout papa i'm here in the courtyard Papa, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, no, I, I would, I would la actually go to one of the the gates, and yeah, I would go to North Gate of Hyrule Castle. Okay. Um, and just sit there, take a short rest. <laughs> okay. Um. So as you uh you head uh you head in that direction. Um also I'm I'm doing a I'm doing a hit dice. Yeah. Uh let's oh, see. yeah, because you took quite a bit of a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a smack from a stealth off. So. <laughs> I, I I took a smack, yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's gonna bring me up to uh nearly full hit po uh, hit points. That's good. Um, um I, I would still have like some scratches and bruises from uh, from the smack. Yeah. Uh. So, um, as you kind of make your way down the pathway and head to the, the north, is is it the north gate of the Hyrule Castle area or the north gate of Hyrule Castle, Castle Town? area? Okay. Um, so as you kind of are about to uh, approach the portcullis. Um, stepping out from a nearby shadow, you see the familiar form of Nihilus just kind of stand in front of you, um, arms folded. I, st like, stiffening up, I, I bow, Father, um, I'm, I'm sorry for making you worry. There's a brief pause where he kind of wanders over and unfolds his arms and pulls you into a hug. You can just feel how I start shivering. I'm so sorry. And save him, father. I couldn't do anything. 
I could I, <laughs> I couldn't do anything that mattered. And it pulls you tighter. Um he says, uh You tried. You tried your best. It's no, not good enough. No one was expecting what was going to happen. <laughs> Nobody, I mean no one, not even Zelish, was aware that anything like this was going to happen. <laughs> Caught all of us off guard. The important thing, that you are safe, and that you are alive and are able to provide information to help stop this. Study this. You're a good soul, Benji. It's that's that's not good enough. To, that's not good enough. We need to stop that thing. And we, we will. need to find it and and we will. <laughs> Take back Simeon. And we need to find it and kill it and destroy it. <laughs> we will. We will. <laughs> this is a darkness that I did not want you to witness. I did not want you to be privy to this kind of pain. Well, it's here. I've seen it. I think the best thing to do is deal with it and become stronger. That we must. Now. And you kind of release the hug a bit. It's both hands on the shoulders and then wipes some tears away from your eyes and says, Tell me what you have found. I will do my best to hunt down that information and come back to you. I'll give him um, the sketch. Tell him that Mara's already like working with it. Then I shall work with her as well. In the meantime, I have been made aware that uh, Chaplain Graves would like to have a word with you. Nothing terrible, he just wants to ask some questions for their own investigation. And then when he's done, you will come back to the castle and you will rest. Very well, Father. I will do as you request. Don't let this darkness consume you. You are a good soul, and we need as many good souls in this world as we can, so that we have a better chance of stopping monstrosities like this from ever happening ever again. I'm... I'm not in the darkness, Father. That's good. But like you, I think I will hide in the shadows. As is the way of our people. He kind of... Uh, m like, goes to muss your hair up a bit, but then kind of just flattens it, makes it look a little bit more presentable. And, um... Once again, puts her on his shoulder and offers you a warm smile and says, uh, And as always, if you need anything, anything, you can come and speak to me. I nod and offer him a, a smile. Just a weak one, but smile nonetheless. And I nod. Uh, 
and I head out towards the north north gate barracks. Okay. And just as the just as I leave the gate from Hyrule Castle, that f smile is no longer on my face. Hmm. Okay. Um. All of you eventually meet up. Um, word comes in that Sho is busy with other things at the moment and will meet with Larson when he can. Um, but uh, all of you are kind of before the, the barracks, at which point um, you see uh, Paulie and Tony uh, standing either side of the doorway. They nod. They don't do any kind of uh, overly familiar thing because they have now been made aware of the situation. And um, uh, Tony says, Well, if, uh, if you head inside, uh, uh, Chapman Graves will be able to speak to you. Um, he won't keep you long, I know. He knows it's late. Well... We better go in then. Okay. Uh, so as you all head inside, the barracks is a ruckus of activity as people are kind of discussing what happened, making sure everything's in order, uh, going about uh, making guard routes or re reanalyzing guard routes, um, discussing suspects, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, you are led, you all of you are led to a small room in the barracks where you see Larson, who has taken off his helmet and placed it on the table. Um, and he kind of stands there with his hands behind his back. Um, and as all of you are brought into the room, uh, the door is closed behind you. And um, he uh, gives a nod and says, um, thank you for... Uh, coming along hmm well what is this about I just want specifically I just want to get some clarification on the events that transpired I'll be asking the other individuals who are at the um at the speech just to make sure I don't suspect any of you of doing anything, but it's mainly for clarification on what did occur, what was found, what we know, so that we can try and find the people who did this. Is that okay? I'll look over at the rest. I guess. Okay. I'm looking for a chicken to pet. <laughs> I find a chicken. <laughs> Oh. Evidence is just there. So I have a morph on my shoulder, or a morph on my shoulder, and a chicken in my hands. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll allow that. You have you have Evie, who's just kind of like now remarkably docile. Um, consider it a therapy cucko. Um, and uh, that says, okay. So, um, from what we understand at this point in time, in the early evening, Lord Simeon had organized a, a speech at his family's graveyard in order to um, educate the people on heraldry, I believe it was. Yeah. Okay. Um, can I get an account on how many were there and what you saw? Of the, like, inhabitants of uh, Castletown? Mm. So you, so not including your retinue or Simeon, how many of the, how many other people were there? There were 10 or so. Okay. Um, and he takes out like a small piece of parchment and a pencil and writes it down. Says, okay. Um, did 
did you happen to see anything suspicious or out of the ordinary on that day prior to the speech, during the speech? Anything you noticed after the speech? Well, you've seen that sigil. Mm -hmm. Beyond that. I'm, I'm not aware of anything specific beyond what you know. Mm. Maybe my compatriots do, but... Nothing. There was nothing before the speech, nothing during the speech, and it was interrupted. Okay. Do you know if do you know if Simeon was involved with anything that seemed out of the ordinary suspicious at all? Was anybody in his employ involved in such a thing? Like define strain. Do you know if, um, I mean, do you know if he was involved with magical things, or do you know if anybody else that he had employed, such as a member of staff or a scholar or anybody, was involved with magical things? It's kind of our job. Yeah. He sent us to look for artifacts and magic stuff, and historic things. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Can you describe some of the things that he asked you to look for? Shit in the books. Historical artifacts. Hmm. Like things we procured. Most of them were just like, as as we said, books, trinkets, mm. uh, fancy clay works, tapestry thing. There were some loots in a bagpipe that we found when we went to Ottermark, and I think one of them ended up being magical, and he wasn't even interested in that. Okay. He was more interested in the books and these tools that were like, they, they looked kind of like the pictures that he has on the shield with the lady. I see. Because I didn't pay attention to the heraldry, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. Um, Ma says, okay, okay. Um, where did the books specifically, where did you get them from? Out of mark, mostly. Out of mark, okay. We got them at the uh, out of mark dungeon. Mm. Mm. That morning, most of them were still on his desk. Okay. So we'll need to uh, need to look into that, see if there's anything in there that might have done something. Um, all right. Oh yes. Also, whoever has someone talking in the background, we can hear them. Mm. Yeah. I think it's yeah. Uh, Alfred's already uh, muted them. Okay. Okay. Um. He uh, Larson kind of sighs slightly. He dwells or something. Um. Says uh. No, I think that's um. I think that's all I need to. All I need for now, though I might ask you to come in again for some more questions if we find anything new. Um, if you're not comfortable staying at Lord Simeon's estate anymore after what happened, then you're free to uh, pick some beds here in the barracks for a while. Um, I'm sure that uh, we, I'm sure that the folks who are on the night shift won't mind at all.
If you have more questions, you can find me at the council. Of course. Side and will nod at the offer of a bed. Yes. You know, me, you here after. Okay. Well, um. I'll be outside. Rest well, and uh, Lawson picks up his helmet, puts it back on, says, um, I need to uh, go and do some more investigating before I get some rest myself. So, uh, take care. And he uh, clatters out the room, leaving you all alone to your own devices. Well, as I said to him, I'll be at the castle. Okay. I'm guessing all of you are kind of just finding your own places to, to rest for the evening. I'm going back to that yeah. tree. You're going back to that tree? <laughs> Tyrina will follow you tree. to that tree. Yeah. You know exactly which tree it is as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's a specific kind of tree. It has a fern mark on it. It's a tattoo. Uh, I'm gonna find a quiet corner in the barracks and um, taking the sketch that Renji gave me and I'm going to see if there's any pretty pictures that are drawn in the book of Mudora since that's on my person. Okay. Uh, make an investigation roll with advantage. I guess I'll take a 13. Um... <laughs> Sounds cool. Whoa. Are you sure you don't want the 13? <laughs> Nah, well, that's a good gosh. roll for me, okay? That's a, yeah, that's I mean, a good roll. I mean, it, uh, we, we'd like, it can't we'd like beat to... that 13. I mean, it's always funny when it's the same number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you uh, you pour through the Book of Medora, and sadly you can't seem to find any pictures that match up with the symbol that Renji had given you. Um, nothing even remotely close. Uh, uh, since combing, like, since scanning through it didn't exactly help, I will, um, just start, go back to the beginning and start reading it like I'm supposed to, okay. slowly, so. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and time skip a bit. Um, so eventually you all find your, you all find your way to your resting places, you all do your nightly activities before drifting off to sleep. And the next day comes. It's a nice, clear day. Um, as uh, as you kind of settle in, um, uh, when uh, for Max and Tyrena, uh, when you wake up and find yourselves on the outskirts of uh, of Hyrule Castle Town, um, do you guys head back to the barracks to meet with the others, or are you going to do something else for the morning? Uh, I did say we'd meet up in the morning, so... Okay. Um, That's where I'm gonna go. Yeah, so, uh... As you head, um... You head back to the barracks, and as you do, um... As you arrive, there is a, a sprightly young man in, uh... A no... Like a... A very kind of regal attire, um... Though very practical as well, as he runs up to the barrack... He runs, he runs past you... Um, into the barracks and heads inside and goes up to the front de front desk and says, um, <clears throat> I have been asked by Lord Rickshaw to address ah, the following fuck. individuals. And he lists off all of your names. Max does loudly say, ah, oh, fuck, behind him. <laughs> <laughs> then just goes to walk past him and to find the others. <laughs> uh. I'm assuming that the rest of you who are in the barracks haven't travelled too far. Nope. Okay. I have not. So they fi you find them easily enough. Um... Heads up, Lord Dickhead, send a guy. Oh, how wonderful. <sighs> and, uh, meanwhile, in the castle, um, how early do you get up, Renji? 
Um, I don't think I like. I would have had uh, enough sleep for a long rest, but beyond that, I would stay in my room uh, at the crack of dawn mm -hmm. and read up, uh, uh, try and, and like see if there's any reference to the, sig the sigil in my book of Twilight Twilight Law. Okay, uh, make an investigation roll with advantage. Investigation with advantage. Yes. Let's see. There we go. Twenty-one. Okay. Uh, That's a nineteen. You scour the book with great and uh, with great care and attention, uh, doing your best to try and find any sort of link. And sadly, the Book of Twilight provides you with nothing. Um, there is not even so much as a reference to anything that looks like an eye in the middle of a hand or an eye with teeth around it. Um, yeah, it's uh, rather disheartening when you get to the uh, when you flip through the pages and find nothing is there. And as you're kind of dwelling on that, there is a uh, on your door. The book quickly goes into the bag of holding. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Come in. Uh, a door opens, and a scribe uh, peeks his head in and says, uh, uh, Lord, uh, Master um, Renji Fox, are you decent? Yes. Okay. Um, Renji's just wearing his, uh, like he's wearing his normal clothes, not wearing the breast plate uh, over it. Okay. Um, he's opens the door a bit more and steps in and says, uh, I have been sent on behalf of Lord Rickshaw, who demands an audience with you and the rest of your companions. Really? I'm, Him? I'm, now? I'm afraid so, sir. Uh, well, uh, thank you for that information. Uh, I grab a coin from uh from my pouch give him uh, a gold piece and then take an uh, take out a second one mm -hmm. uh for him and say this one is for you to admit to me right now without anyone else hearing how much of an asshole lord rickshaw is i'm gonna roll his moral fiber <laughs> um, he uh, he takes a glance at it, snaps out of your hand, and says, "He is a complete fuckwit," and then leaves. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> I like this guy. Um, before I head to Lord Rickshaw's estate, mm -hmm. I would like to go to the armory. Okay. So to see how. Uh, how far along they are. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so you head over to the... Uh, so you get all your stuff ready, you head over to the armory, and um, this early in the morning, Lissa is just uh, kind of moving stuff around and looks over and sees you and kind of has like a, a concerned smile on her face. She says, Oh, hey. Um, hey, Renji, how are you, uh, how are you feeling this morning? Probably not as bad as some people. Mm. Um, how is it going? Uh, well, in general, um, as you said, could be worse. Um, but in regards to the actual project that you've provided us with, uh, should be ready at the very least by tomorrow morning. We've had a bit of a delay. Um, as you can see, there's a yeah. You know, as much as I hate delays, I think I can understand this one. Hmm. Yeah. You're doing fine work, Lissa. Thank you. Keep it up. We will, won't we? And, <laughs> and then her apprentice knows that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> just from, just from a different room. Um, <laughs> sounds like uh, uh, sounds like he's not having a good time in there. Um, 
Two that's aces in bed, though. Four, that's a four today. Um, don't... Don't run them ragged. I don't intend to. I mean, we've only just gotten up. We haven't even had breakfast yet. Uh, yeah, I, I, I need to go to Lord Rickshaw. Better do that on an empty stomach. Ooh, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, I don't envy you there. I definitely do not envy you there. Well, let's just see what it does. What he wants to say. Okay. Um. So you, uh, uh, I guess you head, you stop by the kitchen to grab something to eat, and then head to head to Lord Rickshaw. You going straight yeah, there, like okay. a sweet roll or something. Yeah, they you pick something up and, um, in less of a good mood, make your way towards Lord Rickshaw's estate, just in the same time as the rest of your party, Sans show, um arrive before the door with the two guards standing beside it. Standing to attention as they always do. Max glances over Reggie and says, yeah, I don't want to be here either. <laughs> well, well, uh... just takes the lead and walks straight in. Shrugging my shoulders, I follow. Okay. They, you head in, the guards <laughs> stand to attention as you enter. Um, and uh, you are once again brought into the opulent foyer of Lord Rickshaw, uh, where it's all gaudy and gold and horrible everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, as you as you enter, one of the, uh, one of the servants looks at you and says, Oh, you must be you must be his morning appointment. I will be with you in just a moment, or he will be with you in just a moment. And uh, the servant kind of uh, heads into a different room. Um, and after I go stand outside that door. Okay. <laughs> Max is going to find a wall to lean on with his incredibly dirty cloak. Yeah. Uh, Range is probably just uh, is what kind of uh, room is this? Is uh, like a sitting room? It's kind. Of, it's kind of like a like um, it's a foyer sort of thing. So you've got like a, a table, an ornamental table in the very center of the room. You've got uh, two staircases going up at the far end. Uh, door to the opposite wall. Doors on either side. There's. I don't think there's like a chair to sit in at the moment. It's basically just meant to be a. A thoroughfare into other rooms and out into. Fair enough. Any art? Oh yeah, there's Statue plenty. There's busts, plenty. Uh... There is de there is definitely a lot of art around here. There's pictures on the walls. There's uh, statues and busts in any corner that will hold them. Um... I'm definitely almost touching one of those paintings as I'm leaning on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm going to try and see what. Uh... Which particular piece of art in this room is the one, like the 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 one that would be of least monetary value? Um, um, oh, uh, <laughs> make a. Um, I suppose this somewhat falls into the realm of history. Make a history check. Make an art history check. <laughs> art history, yeah. my major. No. Uh, <laughs> That's a 15. That's a 15. You identify a small painting that appears to be hung by uh, one of the staircases. Kind of one of the things that you only glance at on the way up. Seems the far more impressive, expensive ones are definitely put in places where you would uh, be able to observe them for a great length of time without being in the way. Hmm. I just carefully start to inspect it and Try and try and admire it. Okay, that's fair. Um, Zayden, anything you would like to do in this period of time? Are you going to stand in the stand in an out of the way spot like a good man? <laughs> no, he stands centrally in the room, staring intently at the door. Okay. <laughs> Terry, leaning Ty on his staff. Tyrina takes the axe off of her back and then like leans on it 
as if it's like a cane. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Eventually, uh, the door opens. Um, so what was your stealth roll, Hikam? Was that to not be seen as the person comes into the room or just be standing right there? Uh, generally to not be seen, like, in, in essence, I want to be, like, three and a half paces following Rickshaw down. Okay. Uh, by, like, the end of it kind of thing. Okay. Um, so the, uh, the door opens, and out comes Lord Rickshaw. He hasn't seen you. Um, and he, uh, sees everybody else in the room and goes, Ah! Excellent! I suppose then it. Uh, I suppose then we must get right down to business if you're all here. Um, and he makes his way downstairs. Um, he is followed by at least one guard as he does this, um, <laughs> and this and a servant um, is kind of like situates himself in one corner of the room, um, also to observe and be ready to take orders should there need to be orders. Uh, but Rickshaw makes his way into the room and stands somewhere where he can be observed by all of you, uh, still unaware that Hikan is out of sight. Um, the... I want to get as close to him as I can mm. without stepping in front of the guard or the servant. Okay. So yeah, you, you get around about like seven feet away. Um... And uh, Rish says, Now, I have been made aware of the unfortunate situation that has befallen Lord Simeon. Um, it is... It, it weighs heavy on my heart that a man such as he was taken from this world. And he was rather close to all of you, I understand. I want to insight this bastard. Do we believe him? Make insight checks. Feel free. <laughs> 20, 18, <laughs> 8, 8. 8. Um, <laughs> eight. Um, it kind of max you don't believe a word of this. Um, Zaiden and Renji, eh, maybe, maybe there is some kind of barely functioning heart in this man. Um, <laughs> Max just raises a single eyebrow. Uh, and, uh... Shit. I clicked the thing, sorry. Sorry, that's okay. <laughs> um, I mean, it's appropriate. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, Especially not this guy. Yeah. Um, Rickshaw then says, Now... I am afraid this comes down to something that I wish I could delay until you are all more settled, but I am afraid that matters must be taken swiftly. As Simeon was the co-signer of the contract that had employed you to be in the situation, um, certain effects have come into play now that he is passed on. Um, notably, it means that your employment would fall to me entirely. Um, but, considering the circumstances of his passing, I am afraid that it would not be a wise move in any sense, both for you and myself, to keep individuals who may be suspected of the situation before therefore I am sad to say that I must terminate the contract entirely oh thank the gods for that I'm leaving bye <laughs> he said suspected right yeah mm -hmm. uh, so in in the same vein as Ma Max Hikon just goes oh well, if that is what you believe ah, um, from behind <laughs> him and then as I'm passing him I place my hand on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Uh, roll a uh, roll a. Do you want to do this so it's super super subtle? Yeah, I'll, I'll roll a sleight of hand yes, since please. the guard's right there. 
Okay. So do perception for this is perception for Rickshaw. Nope. Perception for the guard. No. Uh perception for the servant. No. Saving throw for Rickshaw. That's a six. Um <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Oh, this is so bad, but so good. So you place it. For, for, for audio listeners, you can't just use stunning strike on him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is it just like placing a hand on him and then pumping key into him so it just stuns him in place? Um, yeah, pretty much. Okay. He just suddenly feels really weird and stiff. <laughs> yeah. He just kind of. What's the. <laughs> I just shocked him, that's all. Oh, okay. uh, that it. Oh, oh well. <laughs> Very well. Max is, like, uh, Max is like basically out the door already. <laughs> Let's spend as little time in this man's presence as possible. Yeah. Um, Tyrina just offers a glare, hefts up the axe, uh, rather over dramatically, and then wanders outside as well. <laughs> Side and we'll just walk past, kind of glance at Rickshaw's now stunned face and keep going. I understand why you would uh, want to terminate this contract, Lord Rickshaw, but it would really not do to uh, cast the son of Master Nihilus. Such a bad daylight, would it? He would respond if he could. Um... <laughs> hmm. I would think you'd have a reply to that, Lord Rickshaw. Hmm. That's too bad. In that case, if our contract has been terminated, I wish you a very good day. And Reggie leaves as well. Okay. And the door closes behind all of you as you exit out into Hyrule Castle Town, uh, back into the Noble District, now unemployed. Um, Max just looks at the and says, good job. That is... <sighs> I wish I could have done that. There's, there is a reason why he's my favorite. I don't take being called suspicious well when I don't do anything wrong. I'm going to go to the Temple of Din and see if I can find Mr. Graves, see if he can use our help in anything else. Mm -hmm. I might go to the Temple of Hylia and see if the priest needs any help after that. Might I have a, have a suggestion? Says a voice from a nearby yeah. shadow. Who's that? Um, wandering out of the shadow, arms folded, you see, uh, you see the form of Nihilus. Who? Oh, you haven't met him. You met Zelish, though. <laughs> no, yeah. I haven't met this guy. So for, the, so for those who haven't met Nihilus, you see a live man in a form-fitting set of leather armor, and he is covered in knives. Um, he's also got the white hair and tan skin and red eyes of the Sheikah. Would he have uh, similar facial markings as mine? Yeah, he would indeed. Hmm. Father, these are my companions. Companions, this is my father. Mm. So this must be Nihilus. Ah, it's good to meet you Hi. in person. Hello. Why does he have so many knives? Why not well, have so only... many knives? So that he can better... For lay people. Huh. No, you're, not not telling like people you're not telling people I flay people, do you? No, fillet. Yeah. It, it, word, wording does not matter, son. <laughs> uh. Well, I mean, I mean, if it's your job, whatever. <sighs> right. Um. Are you were saying words don't matter. <sighs> Would you like my help or not? Indeed. What do you have in mind? Well, 
we ran that symbol past Zalish as well as any other text that we could find in the library and we could not find anything. Um, Mara is stumped, I am stumped, and Zalish is stumped. And that is not usually something that happens um, given his position. But the thought does as, as as I hear that Zelish is stumped, my eyes are wide, my jaw is on the ground, could, could and I quickly be, regain my composure. Could it be a <laughs> new thing? It might be a new thing, or it might be something that has been so well hidden or forgotten that even the Sheikah are unaware of its existence, which is rare. But I do know of a possible solution. Um, there is a forest north of Kakariko called the Firevine Forest and within it I have been informed in some small capacity that there is a hermit there and the hermit has the ability to look into the history of specific things. Um, given my uh, history, would I know anything about this hermit since... They lived a bit south of him for the first 12 years of my life. Uh, yeah, make a... Make a history roll with advantage, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a three. Um... <laughs> or zero. 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 Um, mm. Yeah, knowledge of this man escapes you. What's a hermit? I point to Zayden. Zayden waves. <laughs> oh, okay. We do not know what someone who decided that society is overrated. We do not know exactly who or what he is, but we do know that uh, he or she or it is capable of looking into things that would not ordinarily be known. Um, unfortunately, considering the recent situation, I need to remain here in order to handle this sort of thing. But if you would like more information on that symbol that you have found, my best suggestion would be to seek out that hermit. Of course you have to stay here. Hey, it's been nothing. <sighs> Father, when's the last time you've been to Kakariko? <sighs> Too long, is the answer. I suppose you'll have me send a message to your wife, my mother. If you would be willing. Of course. I'll be willing if it means that I can avoid everybody else. <laughs> I understand that it is a tense situation, but I have to keep... I am here to keep guard over Princess Sophitia. Considering this recent situation, they would like me to remain here, at least for the near future, to make sure that she is safe from further possible attacks that might occur. Perhaps her education should contain some sort of primer on the Sheikah people. Maybe bring her to Kakariko someday. That might be a good idea. After all, the, the graves of the royal family are kept in Kakariko. It would be nice for her to see her ancestors. If that's what you call nice. It would be one reason to go there. Yes, of course. Right. I'll, uh... I'll see it to it that uh, whatever message you want to send to her, we'll get there. Thank you. I will uh, pass it on when I am made aware that you are leaving. In the meantime, um, do what you need to do, and uh, I will keep you informed if I find anything else. And he, uh, he turns to head back into that same shadow that he appeared out of. And um, unless stopped for any reason, he vanishes from sight. 
after like a second, Max like tilts his head to like look at the shadows. Like, wait, that doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, I actually want to s try and see where he's going because. Like Renji wants to know that trick. Okay. <laughs> How do I Batman? How do I yeah. Batman? Um, okay, so roll a perception check versus Nihilus' stealth. That's a 25. Just need to get up his character sheet really quickly. <laughs> of course. Okay. I'll roll this publicly, why not? That's 28. <laughs> um, oh. You kind of, like... Does it... Hmm? Does it remind me of, um... Certain... Things that I might have seen at the monastery? And I just go, oh, well... Yep. Uh, you, so you, be you peer into the darkness and pretty much just like vanishes from view it's really bizarre to see and you're not you haven't known your father to be magically inclined um so whatever he's done <laughs> it's um almost kind of flabbergasting it's just but how though how um but yeah um as you're kind of left in the noble district on that early morning i think what we will do is we will call it there and uh, see what happens next time, for it is ten past nine. Um, but in the meantime, thank you very much, everybody, for watching um, on this mainly RP episode of the aftermath of Simeon's death. I am the GM, Articulate T, and with me today I have had playing Hikancio Alvarance. I blame Rickshaw. Playing Renji, heir of Nihilus, the Netherlad. This just got more, like, so much more issues. <laughs> <laughs> playing Zaiden Shari, Robo Pirate. I also blame Rickshaw. <laughs> playing Max, Keystrith. Max has finally witnessed daddy issues in action. <laughs> <laughs> And hopefully next time we will have Show Dias, played by Steve the Just. But in the meantime, thank you very much for joining us. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.